Hey guys, um, today I wanted to talk about uh, a piece of music that I really like. Uh, um, it's from the soundtrack Inception. Um, it's called Time by Hans Zimmer. Um, you know, I'm sure you know it. It's probably one of the most popular um, movie soundtrack uh, pieces. Um, and I think, I, well, I wanted to talk about why it's such a good piece. Um, and I know I'm sure there are some hardened classical music fans who probably loathe Hans Zimmer. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure why, but um, I mean, that particular video has 4,400 dislikes, so somebody dislikes the piece of music. Um, but it's, it's a pretty simple piece, um, but I think that's the beauty of it. Um, there's nothing really too novel about the chord structure, chord progression, but I think in that there he is able to draw on raw emotions, um, and that's I think why it res people respond to it so much. And the movie Inception is really, although it's very intricate and complicated, there is something you know raw about it and. Um, and I think that piece kind of draws on that um, raw emotion. Um, and, and getting into more of the details of the piece, um, Hans Zimmer, there's a master class um, that's coming out soon um, where he, he's going to be, I'm not really sure how it's gonna, what's going to happen, but I'm assuming there, there's going to be videos and he's going to show you how to, what he does, his process. Um, but he says something in the the preview video for that course. Um, he kind of implies that he, he writes on story and also says uh, writing music is like uh, a conversation, a uh, question and an answer. Although I think that's a little simplistic. Um, I think there is a hint there. Uh, maybe that is the approach that he takes, kind of how he, he approaches music. Um, at least getting themes, not necessarily how he composes, or at least how he, but how he thinks about themes and music and, and melodies and stuff. Um, and I think it kind of does bear out when when you think about the the the, uh, the piece time. Um, so I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play. I, I'm not a really great performer. Um, I don't read music. I mean, I can read it, but I can't sight read. Um, so I'm I'm just playing what I figured out by ear. Um, so I apologize f if I didn't play every single note. But I'm I'm gonna play it as a demonstration of the chord changes uh, and basic structure of the piece. Um, and it's really based on just two variations of chord chord uh, um, progressions. But anyway, I'll I'll start it. So that's the first chord progression, and that one is the most um, prominent as far as frequency. But there's a variation that, to me, there's like there's a series of micro and macro question and answering. If you if you look at it in the way that he kind of hints at in that masterclass preview video. Um, so this is a question. So that's a question. And that might be an, an answer, or it might be kind of like an, a, an addition to that, an adi like an added part of that question that was already created with that theme. So we see right there. Even you could you could argue that there's a micro and macro thing going on because there, 
the, the whole chord progression as a whole could be seen as a question and but then the two chords right there that could be a question that could be a question or they could be a question and then the second part the two chords that could be the answer so if you you see based on what he says that might be kind of his process and it kind of makes sense but then this might be and it was kind of paradoxical about this piece um, if you look at it in the way that um, the question and answer kind of way is that the variation that happens that I'm going to show you in a way could be a question and an answer as well um, so the variation is really actually the as far as I could tell so far I, ha I haven't really worked out all of the, the notes and everything but it seems like um, the variation, the only thing different is really the second chord. And if there's any variations in the other chords, they're, they're very minor. Um, but I'll, I'll play it for you. So that's the same. And this becomes... that note, the C, that would be a C3, I believe. That, although it's saying it's a C2 here, C3, so well, on my keyboard it's a C, it seems like a C3, but anyway, I think that note is in there somewhere, I feel like it should be. So basically what you have there is a C, um, yeah, C major 7. Um, so that's the variation because the, the first part, the first part is it, it goes from an A minor to an E minor. So the, um, when the, in the variation, the A minor to a C7. So um, as far as I can tell, that's really the only part in the variation. But, but it's very, very profound, though, because um, it basically is, it, it's still an E minor, but he adds... Um, notes and, and inversion the inversion the way it is and everything it, it makes it into a C C major 7 I'm not sure if that makes sense but it's it's not an E minor but it's it borrows from an E minor um, because if you take away that C and I know the C's in there somewhere. Uh, it, it sounds like it, sh it is. So um, I have a pretty good ear, I think. So um, that's the variation. So the melody hits that high, that high part. So so we haven't gone that high yet. really bad so the melody goes to that point in that variation um, and I think that's an idea of, of using you know the concept of less is more you don't play the melody stays down here and then the next time 
it, it goes higher um, and it kind of creates more of an illusion that it's a different chord uh, even more so that it's a different chord um, now what can we kind of gather from this and kind of make our own music from from this uh, concept of questioning and answering because like <clears throat> Like I said, it could be, you know, it's a micro and macro uh, level of questioning and answering you could see um, in this piece. Because overall, you have the, the main part. That could be seen as a whole question right there. And then the variation could be seen as an answer. But, but kind of like a perplexing answer kind of left you without the full answer, which is kind of like the ending of the movie, you know, because you, you, you don't know if the, the top is going to stop or not. So, so, you know, think of it like that. You, you have, so then you have that answer. Let's see if I can do this chord right. So that, to me, that that variation there on the, on the theme creates kind of a paradox, which which is what a lot of the movie revolves around the idea of paradoxes. So it's kind of like to me that p the whole piece can be looked at as one big question because. And even when it tries to answer, it just adds more questions because um, it doesn't really, you know, it seems unsettling. Like if that is an answer, that variation, it doesn't really, re you know, add any resolution. It just, it kind of adds an element to the question that's already there because it's it's adding, like I said, the, the E minor, just adding, it's just adding a C to, to, to it which makes it into a C7, C major 7, but so, you know, metaphorically and musically, it's a p p paradoxical question-answer kind of thing, and it doesn't tell you enough. You know, you want more. You want to know. So it's, it's brilliant, really. And, um, you know, we can kind of, from this, we can kind of think of ways that we can kind of write dif music differently. Um, I was kind of fooling around um, trying to think of kind of come up with a piece based kind of around this concept of question and answering and variations and stuff. before. Um, let me kind of flesh it out right now. the variation it's kind of it's kind of similar the very the structure is kind of similar to to time but it's completely different you don't want to obviously you don't want to copy the track so what i'm saying is is a way to think about music in a similar way and um obviously my piece isn't as deep and profound um
So that kind of borrows from the concept that I kind of um, extracted from time based on what Hans Zimmer said himself about questions and answers. So you have... That could be a question. That could be an answer. And then here comes the possible answer to that if it was an entire question. So that's the variation. I'm add, again, I'm adding the C, but it's not in the same way because it's. And then I go back to that. And I'm also adding a variation of this. So, you know, not perfect, whatever. I, I, I came up with that um, basically. 20 minutes ago, right before I started um, um, recording this. Um, but, you know, if you spent more time with it, um, you know, I'm sure you guys have come up with something better. But basically when I, um, what I'm getting at is just there are different ways you can think about writing music. And sometimes, you know, um, thinking of those different ways can sometimes help you uh, get out of a rut, you know, and, um, you know, theme and variation, I think, um, there are different ways to approach it, and I think the question and answer is, is kind of an interesting way to look at it, um, again, I, I think it's simplistic, but, um, simplicity can be a beautiful thing sometimes, and, um, yeah, that's, I think that's about it, thanks for watching.